Hello and welcome tonight to our services here at Petersville. We'd like to welcome you if you are visiting with us. We're appreciative that you uh, chose to be a part of our number tonight. We uh, hope and pray that everyone has had a good afternoon as some rain kind of moved through and the sun is now brightly shining. We hope for a safe evening tonight and a good hour together. We will have children's Bible hour starting back this evening. And I know that um, the younger ones will be excited. It's my understanding that's two-year-olds through first grade. Um, I'm pretty sure we'll go downstairs here in just a moment, if you wish to. We will sing a couple of songs. And then after those two songs, uh, before we have our scripture reading and prayer, we'll dismiss those who may be going down to uh, Bible hours. So I know they have some things prepared for the younger ones. The two songs we'll sing before. First of all is the back cover, Bound for the Land of Canaan. So if you would take a song book this evening, please, we'll sing the back cover. That one is uh, hard to find in the PowerPoint. We've had it before, and then it disappeared, and not sure if it's there again, but uh, we'll sing it. And then Jesus Loves the Little Children, number 1015, before we uh, dismiss the younger ones. So let's start by singing Bound for the Land of Canaan. Before that, let's we'll bow for a moment of prayer as we begin. Dear God, we're grateful for today. We're thankful for the many blessings you have given us. And Lord, we know that you bless us so richly, both physically and spiritually, and we're grateful for that. We're mindful of all those who are in need of prayer. And Lord, often we continually pray and then we forget to uh, offer a prayer of thanksgiving. So thank you for all of the prayers that's been answered on all of our behalf this, uh, this day today, but also this past week. But Lord, we know there's heavy hearts here in the uh, room tonight and also in our community. We pray for those who have lost loved ones, for the sacrifice of those who lay down their life for us every day. We thank you for those men and women who serve in that capacity and be with uh, the Riser family continually. Pray that you be with those who are at home who have been through sickness or injury and we ask for their recovery so that they can be back with us and be with their family. Help that I hope that you will, Lord, bless those who are shut in and their families as well, as this is a hard thing when they want to be here but just can't physically, and those who are taking care of them. Pray that you be with them and strengthen their, their, uh, their will and their faith as well. And God, just help us to learn tonight for the younger ones to be able to enjoy their time downstairs and for us here in the auditorium, and ultimately that we can learn something to share with the community around us. But we fail each day, and we... We do our best to hopefully stay on the right path and forgive us when we do and help us to, to continue to, to pick ourselves up with your hand and with those around us to walk in faith. Through Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's uh, stand and sing Bound for the Land of Canaan, please. All right, let's go in for a city from that right eternal shore where the saints of God shall gather and live on forevermore. It's a land of Thank you. 
Number 1015. 1015, Jesus loves the little children. And it only has the first verse or the one verse here in the book, but we'll sing again through and sing Jesus. Uh, no, excuse me, that's the wrong one. We'll sing 1015 through twice, same verse, please. <clears throat> Let's sing. Jesus who are going down to Bible Hour will be dismissed at this time, and the one who is uh, down to lead our uh, prayer and read the scripture, if you'd be making your way forward. If you are visiting with us, just down the uh, stairway to the left will be uh, the area in which they'll have the Bible Hour. So if you'd like to make your way down at this time, and then Brother Jerry, you have the reading and prayer. Tonight's reading will be taken from Hebrews chapter 1, be reading verses 4 through 7. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 4 through 7. I'll be reading from the updated New American Standard Bible. I have become as much better than the angels, as he has inherited a more excellent name than they. For to which of the angels did he ever say, You are my son? Today I have begotten you, and again. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. And when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, and let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels, he says, who makes his angels winds and his ministers a flame of fire. Bow with me, please. Dear Lord, thank you for another beautiful day that you have given us. Dear Lord, thank you for all the many blessings that you give us each and every day. Lord, as we go throughout this new week, Help us to be the examples that we need to be for you and help us to always remember to put you first in everything that we say and do. Dear Lord, be with all those that are dealing with sickness and health issues at this time. Strengthen and comfort them. Be with those that are dealing with loss of loved ones. Give them that strong shoulder to lean on and let them turn to you as they go through this time. Dear Lord, please forgive us of our sins. Help us to always remember that we are not perfect and we all need that strength that only you can provide. Dear Lord, thank you for sending your son who died on that cross for all of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This uh, evening's song of invitation will be 315. When I survey the wondrous cross, number 315. And then before tonight's lesson, we're going to start on, well, we'll sing number 850. It is entitled Heaven Medley, and it includes three songs. And I enjoy singing these medleys that they're kind of set up in the book often, or sometimes, I guess you would say. But we will sing the first and third verse of 851, I'll Fly Away. And we'll sing the first and second verse of When the Roll is Called Up Yonder. And then the first and the third of When We All Get to Heaven. So we'll all be out of breath after these three. But um, beautiful medley in which they really uh, flow into each other and the meaning as well. So let's sing with 
with heart and conviction, and then we'll turn it over to Brother Adam. Let's stand as well, please. Some glad for me with the sight of soul. Appreciate uh, John for leading that medley right before we got together. Uh, before I came up here, that that was that was that was energetic. Um, you can tell when John's getting into the songs that he's leading, his uh, forehead turns red, and uh, there's a vein or two up there. And he was he was in it. He was into it. I could tell. And if you don't sit close enough to the front that you can see those kinds of details, well, you know. I think there's plenty of room, so you could come on down and join us. In Hebrews chapter 1, the first kind of argument that the writer makes 
about uh, the superiority of Jesus. The fact that Jesus is better than everything else you can come up with is Jesus is better than the angels. So I found a quiz that's in the book that we've been using, uh, and it is about angels, and so we're going to talk about them a little bit tonight. As always, if you have a smartphone or a device, I encourage you to uh, join in and pick that. I don't know who wants me to be nicer, but... Um, Okay, <laughs> John put that. That's what you get when you talk about the song leader. That's fair. Uh, again, uh, a lot of good, uh, good, uh, a lot of good names, and then there are some other names that I won't uh, won't bring up. I, some of them, you know, I don't know. If you win, I just don't know if I can say your name out loud. So I just keep that in mind if you want to be pronounced victorious. But we're talking about angels for a little bit tonight. And again, the Bible doesn't go into a lot of great detail about angels. Uh, there are some interesting things that are said, but a lot of it is left up to our imaginations. Now, um, in the future, some of the quizzes that we will do are going to be, is, are the things that we think about when we think about certain events or certain people are they factual events or are they things that we've kind of made up in our own mind? And we'll see, we'll do the test to see how, um, how accurate our knowledge is on some of those things. I also wanted to give you a heads up. If you were here earlier uh, in, in this year when we were learning the uh, themes for the books of the Bible, all right? We did the New Testament themes for the books of the Bible. This was when... We all had our uh, class in here together, and we started off with the kids down front, and then we went back to our seats and things. Uh, one of our quizzes here in the next couple of weeks is going to be based from those uh, going back to those New Testament books, their themes. You know, the picture of a king sitting on a throne, and there was a mat in front of him with the big letter U on it. What book of the Bible was that talking about? Matthew, right? Matthew, right? And the theme for the book of Matthew is that Jesus is the king. That's why that was there. So I'm going to put some, um, I'm going to, cash money, okay. Um, I'm going to put, uh, you know, I'm going to put some of those pictures up there and see if you can uh, remember which books of the Bible those are. I tell you that ahead of time because if you, <laughs> in Diego Montoya, all right? I, tell, I say that, who else wants me to be nicer? Did you get kicked out and join again, or is somebody else? Okay, well, I don't know. All right, I don't know who else I was mean to. I didn't know I was mean to anybody else. Um, you can find all of these cahoots online, if I'm not mistaken. If you go to cahoots.com and search Adam Richardson, I believe you can find all the quizzes going back to the beginning of this year. So you could you could check and look into any one of these again, including the ones about the books of the New Testament. Uh, so you could get a little bit of practice in. I wanted to give you that. I wanted to give you that um, idea and and let you do that ahead of time if you were interested. Uh, but we'll do these for for a few more a uh, few more months and see see how that goes. Back to angels. We don't know a lot of specifics about angels, but we know that since, um, since the Bible introduced us to the idea of angels, people have been fascinated with them. People have really been interested in knowing as much about angels as possible. Uh, there is a book that uh, is called the Book of Enoch. Uh, it's not in our Bible. It's not an inspired book of the Bible. In fact, it dates to you know, all the way back to, you know, around the time of Jesus, a little bit before, probably a little bit after. Um, but in the book of Enoch, there is an, an extensive and detailed description of all of these different angelic powers and different angelic categories. And, and a lot of the things that we think of today when we think about the, the different types of angels and the hierarchies and things don't come from the Bible at all. They just come from, you know, some of these external sources. So, but people have always been that way. And in fact, it must have been that way because when the writer of Hebrews starts this book off or this lesson off, the first thing he says is, hey, I want you to know how great Jesus is. In fact, Jesus is so great 
He's greater than the angels. That was like the first and the strongest point that he could make when he begins to talk about the angels. He is more, he is superior to angels. His name is more excellent than their name. And the angels are not called children or son of God. And uh, let the angels worship in chapter 1 and verse number 6. The angels worship Jesus. Of the angels, he says, he makes his angels winds and his ministers a flame of fire. I am interested in seeing some of these questions and how they play out where angels are specifically mentioned in the Old and the New Testaments. Just ten questions. So we'll see uh, what our knowledge is of these, uh, of these categories and of these ideas. And... Um, Kiffin's popcorn, I know what that's about. All right, let's start with 10 questions about angels tonight. Just wing it. The title of the lesson, the quiz. Which angel was sent to help Daniel understand his vision? Is it a prince of Persia, Roman Downey, Apollyon, or Michael the Archangel? Which one helped Daniel understand his vision? Got about five seconds left. By the way, for those who don't remember, Roma Downey uh, was who? She was Ainge. Yeah, she was the actress in Touched by an Angel. She was it Monica? Was that her name? I think. Uh, so good thing nobody put uh, Roma Downey. Uh, yeah, good. Most of us got Michael the Archangel. Apollyon is a name in the uh, New Testament for one of the. It's a destroying name. If I'm remembering correctly, um, and it doesn't apply to a good angel, it applies to a destructive force. And the Prince of Persia is mentioned in the book of Daniel, but the Prince of Persia is some type of spiritual being that interrupts God's work and the work of these angels that are trying to help Daniel out. So that's an interesting story, an interesting thing to, uh, to look into if you want to do some further digging about this episode. Let's see what our current standings are. What's our first five tonight? All right. Uh, lots of initials and then just an emoji. So we have the artist formerly known as Smiley Face, I guess, whoever that is. Uh, that's okay. All right. Question number two. According to Jude, who did Michael the Archangel argue with concerning the body of Moses? Did he argue with God, with Satan, with Daniel? Or with Gabriel? Who did Michael the archangel argue with concerning the body of Moses? We've got five seconds left. Again, archangel is a term that's applied to Michael, and that's the only kind of distinction or differential that we get between angels, some being superior perhaps to other angels. But that was a tricky question. A lot of us put Gabriel, who is another angel that is mentioned by name in the New Testament. Most angels do not have names that are given to us. Now, they may all have a name, but the Bible doesn't tell us the names of most of them. Um, but that actually, in the book of Jude, Satan and Michael the archangel have this dispute over the body of Moses because the Bible tells us at the end of Genesis, uh, not the end of Genesis, the end of Exodus, um, that God is the one who buries Moses. God takes the body of Moses wherever it is laid to rest. Nobody knows, not even apparently Michael and, and uh, Satan. So they get into a heated argument about that. All right, so nine of us got that one right. Let's see if that changed anything. 18, Pan, Samson. 25 isn't one. I don't know what that means. But we'll get there. Oh, I do know what that means. Man. I walked right into it. I walked right into it. All right, that was good. Number three, an angel appeared to Jesus and strengthened him right after Jesus blank. Walked on the sea, was brought before Pilate, cleared the money changers from the temple, or prayed on the Mount of Olives. When did an angel appear to Jesus to strengthen him? The Bible specifically says that. This one, the correct answer is after he prayed on, Mount, on the Mount of Olives. That's very good. Yeah, that's in the Garden of Gethsemane. That is on the night that he would be arrested uh, and, and uh, stand trial before his crucifixion. 
And it does say that an angel of the Lord uh, strengthened him in that moment. Uh oh. All right. Doing good. Let's continue on to question number four. Which of the following did not get the name of their child from an angel in the Bible? Did Hagar, the mother of Ishmael, get her name for her son from an angel? Did Jochebed, the mother of Moses, get the name of her child from an angel? Did Mary, the mother of Jesus, get the name of her child from an angel? Did Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, get the name of his son? All of them did except Moses. Do you remember... Who was it that named Moses, do you remember? It was actually Pharaoh's daughter that named Moses. Uh, Moses was named by an Egyptian. The others, even Ishmael, uh, was given a name by, the, the, by an angel. You shall call his name, etc., etc. Uh, except for Moses. Moses was drawn up out of the water, and so the name Moses means drawn out. And uh, he's like, oh, look, I found him in a bucket. So I'm going to name him Bucket. Kind of. Not exactly, but kind of. All right. Let's continue on to the halfway point. Question number five. In Acts 8.26, the angel of the Lord tells Philip to go where? East on the road to Emmaus, to the town of Samaria, south along the road to Gaza, or on a diet? I don't know how big, the Bible doesn't tell us how big Philip was, so maybe, but that's not what the angel told him to do. The correct answer, Philip was already in the town of Samaria when the angel appeared to him and said, you need to go south toward Gaza, and there on the road to Gaza is when Philip encountered a chariot riding along the road with the Ethiopian eunuch inside. All right. The road to Emmaus is the road where two disciples were walking when Jesus appeared to them after he'd been resurrected from the dead. That's where the road to Emmaus comes into play. And the diet, I don't want to talk about that. All right, our current leaderboard. Hey, congratulations. I need to be nicer. And I'm not saying who's in third place. And question number six. The angel of the Lord spoke from heaven and saved this boy's life just in time. Elisha, Stephen, Isaac, or Jesus? Whose life was saved in the nick of time by an angel speaking from heaven? A little bit of a hint there in the picture. But that was Isaac. Very good. Most of us got that right. Isaac, you remember when that happened? You don't remember that? That's exactly right. It's very interesting in that chapter, Abraham uh, says, uh, I think three different times, here I am, here I am, here I am, talking to God, talking to other people, um, and right before he's about to fulfill uh, what God had told him to do, the angel calls out to him from heaven, and he says, I'm right here, I'm doing what you told me to do, but he says, uh, you don't need to go through. All right, still doing well, about halfway through, now let's do question number seven. The leaderboard has not changed at this point. When an angel appeared to Cornelius in Acts 10, the angel told him to send for whom? Send for Luke? Send for Jesus? Send for Simon Peter? Or send for Saul? Which one of those is the correct answer? Cornelius was told to get whom to come to his house. And that is Simon Peter. That is Simon Peter. Simon, uh, it's Peter, that's the Apostle Peter. Peter is the one who comes to his house and preaches to him, and then uh, the household of Cornelius is baptized. The leaderboard now sits the same as it did before. The scores continue to rise. You guys are doing good. But that one was a tough one for four people. All right, question number eight. Let's keep moving along. Which prophet had a live coal brought from the altar by an angel to touch his lips? Jeremiah, Paul, Isaiah, or Hot Lips Habakkuk. You didn't know that was a Hebrew. That's what Habakkuk means in Hebrew, did you? Hot Lips. A live coal was brought from the altar. 
altar in heaven by an angel to touch the lips of Isaiah. Isaiah and Jeremiah are so similar in a lot of ways, it's easy to confuse those two. Those were the two that I had to kind of think between. But it's in Isaiah chapter 6. And in Isaiah chapter 6, um, Isaiah is brought into the throne room of God, and he sees this amazing sight, and he hears this conversation, and, um, and he says, Woe to me, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I'm from a people of unclean lips, right? And so then the angel comes and offers him a way to be purified so that he can remain in the throne room of God to receive the commission to speak God's message. So that is Isaiah. I really, I'm going to go back and look and see who put hot milk tobacco. I'm going to catch you. There's two of you in this room who put that. It's okay. All right. All right, we're doing well. Had a little bit of changes here. We got uh, two questions left. Question number nine says, which miraculous episode in Peter's life specified that an angel was involved? All these happened. Which one had an angel? When a, an angel allowed him to walk on water, an angel freed him from prison. An angel fed him all kinds of animals from a giant sheep. Or an angel healed the ear Peter had cut off of a soldier. Which one of those specifically says an angel did it? Freed him from prison. That's in the book of Acts. Very good. Um, two of those happened in the Gospels before Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Walking on the water and uh, Jesus healing the ear of Malchus. Uh, the, high, the servant of the high priest after Peter cut his ear off. And then the other two happen in the book of Acts. Uh, one is a vision, but then the, the other one, Peter thinks it's a vision. I find that an interesting event. Uh, Peter thinks he's having a dream because in the middle of the night, he wakes up in jail and his shackles are broken and the door is open and somebody's saying, hey, let's go. He's like, oh, well, this is a cute dream. I wonder, what, I wonder how this dream will end. And he gets up and walks out and then all of a sudden he looks around and the Bible says, oh, wait, this is it. So that's when he goes back to uh, the house of the other disciples, his friends, and um, the, the servant in the house opens the door, sees that it's Peter, and slams the door in his face because she doesn't think that he could possibly be out of prison. She thought he was dead. She thought she was looking at a joke. All right. Let's see, 22 of us got that one right. All right. Leaderboard changes a little bit. We've got one question left. We've got one more idea about angels before we have our devotional thought. Think about this for another minute. Let's see what we've got. Who's the only person mentioned in the Bible to actually have wrestled with an angel? Jacob, Samson, Michael, or Adam? One of those four individuals wrestled with an angel. One of those four individuals is an angel, and one of them wrestled with a different angel, as far as we know. Which one was it? It was Jacob. That's exactly right. In uh, Genesis, uh, Jacob wrestles with an angel until morning. It specifically says, the angel of the Lord. And then afterwards, the angel changes Jacob's name to uh, Israel. Because Israel means wrestles with God. Israel means wrestles with God. So the Israelites were people who fought against God an awful lot over their history. But Jacob was the first one to do that, and he was the father of the 12 tribes. Um, I actually, I don't want to go into too much detail about this, but I have a, a friend in college who studied a particular type of martial arts that was a grappling form of martial arts. And he told me that the history of that particular uh, discipline was from the angel wrestling with Jacob because the angel put Jacob's hip out of socket. He dislocated the, uh, Jacob's hip. And uh, he said that the way that we grapple, we, we do that kind of stuff. And so we're like, you know, that's, that's what kind of martial arts the angel was practicing on Jacob. I don't know that there was some kind of, you know, ninjutsu going on in the Bible. I don't want to, you know, I don't want us to think that way. But it was interesting that they had this physical altercation, uh, and it resulted in Jacob being lame from that point forward. But he also had a blessing from the angel as well. All right. That was just to build up the suspense for our top three tonight. Third place is somebody. No, Crimson Tide. 
The A team comes in second place, and first place is. Okay. I think this is, is that two weeks in a row? Or is that just uh, two times? Uh, again, who's the A team? I keep forgetting. I'm supposed to know. That's what Arnie's. That's what I thought. That's exactly right. Who came in third place? I'm so proud of you. Oh, of course, Jack and the Culbersons. All right. Good job, all of you and everybody else that did a good job and answered those questions. If you learn anything, in my opinion, then it's a beneficial uh, event. Let me see if I can remove that from... Uh, I, I want you to turn in your Bible back to Genesis. I believe we're going to go to Genesis chapter 28. I want to look at this event that I mentioned a little bit earlier. We talked about how Jacob wrestled with God. Now that happens in a different location. Um, but in Genesis chapter 28, Jacob has another encounter with a group of angels that significantly changes his outlook on life. In Genesis 28 and verse 10, it says that Jacob left Beersheba, went down toward Haran. And as he came to a certain place and stayed that night, the sun had been, having been set, he took one of the stones from that place, put it under his head and lay down in that place to sleep. And as he dreamed, behold, there was a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And there, behold, the Lord stood at the top and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and to your offspring uh, your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west, to the east, to the north, and the south. And in you and your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Behold, I'm with you. I will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I promised you. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he said, Surely the Lord is in this land. Place, and I did not know it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! There, this is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. I don't want to put too much emphasis on this, but this event in Jacob's life uh, shook him up. It, it kind of changed his behavior. Uh, this and the episode later on when he wrestles with an angel are, are pretty pivotal moments in his life. But he associates the location where he's at as a very significant spiritual holy place. In other words, it seems like this ladder that he has the vision of wasn't going to appear just anywhere. This wasn't the kind of thing where it didn't matter if you're sleeping in Jerusalem or if you're sleeping in, um, in, you know, in America or sleeping you know, in your home or, or that this, you would just have a dream about this ladder. And apparently the, the, the vision was here is a place where God comes down, where the angels come and go. Now again, I don't want to put too much emphasis on that, but it seems like that's what is being described in this place because when he wakes up, Jacob says, this place is the gate of heaven. This is God's house. And so he names the place the house of God. You look down a few verses further, the name of this city or this location, this place, is Bethel. Because Bethel is Hebrew for house of God. And I want to believe that there is something significant about this place. I want to believe that it is something special. Because this is not the only time that the city of Bethel or that this place where Jacob took this took this rest and had this vision sleeping on a rock, comes to prominence. Bethel is first mentioned back in Genesis chapter 12 and verse number 8. It is at this place where another person has an encounter with 
God. From here, Abraham moved to the hill country on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. Abraham meets with God in the verses prior to that. And then after God makes this promise and pledge to him, Abraham goes and sets things up. And at Bethel, Abraham builds an altar to God to sacrifice. Later, his grandson, Jacob, would come and sleeping there at night would have a vision of this ladder coming at, with the angels coming and going, ascending and descending. This is some kind of holy place. If you turn to Judges chapter 20, we can notice a couple of other times. I'm not going to pull out all of the uh, interesting times that, the, that the place, this place of Bethel is mentioned. But apparently this is the house of God. This, this spiritual location was uh, somewhere that angels, that spiritual beings, that spiritually significant things would happen. In Judges chapter 20, we can read about the way that the people thought about Bethel. Start with me down in verse 18. Uh, in verse 18, the people of Israel arose and went to Bethel and inquired of God. So apparently before they had the temple or the city of Jerusalem was the place where the king lived because they still have judges. It was at Bethel where they knew this latter, uh, spiritually speaking, was present. Then God was apparently there. This was the house of God where they asked these questions. The Ark of the Covenant stayed here in Judges chapter 20 and verse number 27. The people of Israel inquired of the Lord, for the Ark of the Covenant of God was there in those days. So they recognized that this was a holy and a significant place. Other places that we could look, uh, Judges chapter 4, Deborah, who is one of the judges in Israel, she does, uh, she does her work near the city of Bethel. Samuel, when he is a prophet and he's making his way around uh, the various cities to judge, he spends time in Bethel. Elijah and Elisha both had uh, dealings in the city of Bethel. Apparently, there was a school for prophets there. In 2 Kings chapter 2, if you want to turn there, 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 2 and 3, this is the transition point between Elisha, who had been the mentor and the, uh, the, the, the teacher, and he's about to be taken up into heaven, and Elijah is going to take over for him. And they're traveling to the place where God's going to take him up in a chariot. And they stop, according to, um, according to chapter 2, verses 2 and 3, Elijah says to Elisha, Stay here. For the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel, and the sons of the prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Don't you know that today the Lord will take away your master from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Be quiet. Now that's another interesting sermon for a different day. But the idea is that Bethel is this holy place. It's the house of God. There's the ladder. Jacob's ladder, the angels ascend and descend. There's the Ark of the Covenant that lives there for a time before it's moved to Shiloh and then moved into Jerusalem. There is this time now where there is a school of prophets. There's a group of people who are learning how to be prophets or who are tending to other prophets. And Elisha and Elijah come there before Elisha is taken up into heaven. This is a holy place. And then I want you to turn your Bible. Let's go back to 1 Kings chapter 12. So the reason I wanted to talk about Bethel tonight, in conjunction with this talk about angels, these interesting illustrations and things that happen with spiritual beings that we're not going to understand all about. The Bible doesn't give us all the details about these things, but it does talk about some interesting and fascinating events. <clears throat> But in 1 Kings chapter 13, we were there last week. Last Sunday night, if you were here and we did the quiz, we were talking about great actors, tricksters, people who pretended to be something or who lied to do something. 
And we talked about this episode that happened where a prophet lied to another prophet and said, God told me you need to come eat at my house. And when he did that, the real message from God is you have broken my commandment and there's going to be a, a, a consequence for that. You're going to die because of that. That whole episode happened in Bethel. That whole thing took place in the city we're talking about tonight because this prophet had left Jerusalem and traveled to Bethel because the new king of the northern tribes, Jeroboam, my fourth, fifth, and sixth grade class, we played, uh, uh, we played uh, uh, Twin Cities is what we played on Wednesday night, right? We built cities and, and we knocked them down because the, the nation of Israel was split in two after King Solomon. And we talked about Rehoboam and Jeroboam, or as they called them in class, uh, Jerry and Bob. Um, and Jeroboam is trying to establish this new kingdom, and he's trying to make sure that the people that have left Jerusalem never go back. And he has a realization. Every year, every person is supposed to go to Jerusalem and offer sacrifices. They're supposed to go to the temple and offer a sacrifice. But right next door to the temple is the palace where David's descendants are in charge. And if they go to Jerusalem every single year, eventually they're going to want to rejoin with the people down there. It'll just be easier to do that. Jeroboam's solution in 1 Kings chapters 12 and 13 I'll build my own temple. In fact, he builds two, not to be outdone. He doesn't build one temple, he builds two temples. And he says, you can keep worshiping God exactly like you've always done. Just don't go to Jerusalem to do it. Come to my places of worship instead. And at both of those locations, he put up a golden calf. We've talked about this before. One of those temples was in the city of Bethel. So this spiritual life continues these spiritual things keep happening but now jeroboam has twisted them there will be great prophets who will come up later on who are prophets of the golden calves they are prophets of bethel they are false prophets they tangle with amos and they tangle with hosea hosea doesn't call it bethel bet meaning house el meaning god he calls it beth evan beth -Avon. When he writes about the city, he calls it beth -Avon because beth -Avon means house of idols. House of idols. They have lost their way. I think there are all these fascinating connections that we can make studying the scriptures and finding out how people and places interact with one another and how they uh, continue to um, influence events and influence the things that are taking place. I think it's important that we study these things and learn them. You never know. Some of this stuff might pop up in a quiz later on. You might want to be glad that you paid attention if you did, because you might see this information again somewhere else. But even if you didn't, wouldn't it be helpful to know more about the stories of God's people so that we can find out what our place in those story, in that continuing story, is? Tonight we have an invitation song. We've already shared that. Uh, John's going to come up here and lead us in that. And while we're singing those verses together, if there's a need that you have tonight, we want to take every opportunity when we get together. We don't want anybody that is a, a part of our family. We don't want anybody that comes to visit with us. We don't want anybody that comes through these doors to ever leave here thinking that they can't ask for help. That's, that's really all the invitation is. This moment... I know that it becomes something that is just so traditional and so expected that even as soon as I begin to, to think about it and talk about it, you, you begin to tune the words out, you pick up your songbooks, and you're thinking about what's coming next. I understand that. But just remember, this moment is a declaration. This moment is a statement that says, you need to be here, and if you need something else, while you're here, it's a good time to get it. What can we do for you? What can we do to help? If that applies to you tonight, I'd invite you to come down to the front pew while we stand together and while we sing.
uh, this is just about the trunk or treat that I talked about this morning. Uh, we have sign up list. Uh, there's some on the bulletin board. Uh, April, give me this one, April Straight did, and this is for uh, the food. Uh, if you can help with that, uh, make a crock pot of chili or uh, some uh, cheese dip, looks like. So, or, or nacho cheese, I guess, for the chili. I don't know. Anyway, you figure it out. But anyway, uh, this will be up here on the front pew, and like I say, there's a uh, sign-up list. If you're coming at all, if you want to just come, that's okay. You're, everybody's invited. Uh, but we've got a sign-up list if you're just coming. We have a sign-up list if you can do a trunk. We have... We have a sign-up list um, for helping set up and, and uh, clean up, and then we have a list for face painting. And so uh, if you can help with any of that, just sign the list on the bulletin board next to my office, and we would really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for being here tonight. If you're visiting with us, we're always real appreciative of your presence. We hope that you'll come back and visit with us again. We worship Wednesday night at 6.30. If you're here and have not had the opportunity to partake for the Lord's Supper, it is prepared for you. You go through the door to my right at this time, and someone will be there uh, to serve you. I want to remind the uh, uh, Isaiah's call Wednesday night. That is at five o'clock if you can help uh, pack and do things for isaiah's call i know they would appreciate that also sisters in stitches uh thursday night at six o'clock here at the building uh if, if you've made hats for the neonatal unit at uab you can turn those in at this time um appreciate all of you that that do that please do continue to remember all those on our list those that are scrolling i just want to run through these uh vernicia, vernicia barrett uh, Benjamin Beal, uh, Steve Butler, Wanda Collier, Margie Cox, Gloria Danley, Julie Fulmer, Tara Hargett, Thomas uh, Kelly, Jim Lancaster, Sheree Lavender, Judy McClure, Vicki Morris, Ann Oakley, Don Pollard, Daisy West, Virginia West, uh, Dustin Burns. want to continue to remember Dustin as he recovers, so be sure and check on these. Send them a note. If, you, if, if someone was not here this morning that you missed, Please be sure and check on them. Uh, send them a text, give them a call, send them a card. Uh, do what you can to encourage them. Again, thank you for being here. If you, uh, does anyone have any other announcements? Anything else? If not, let's stand and we'll be dismissed in our closing prayer. Pray with me, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we're extremely thankful for this hour of worship that you've allowed us to uh, come here and join safely to uh, be a part of. We're, we're very sorry for the many, many times we fail you on a daily and weekly basis, and, but we are uh, forever grateful for the never-ending grace that you continue to extend to us regardless. We're thankful for the sacrifice of your Son and what that means for us and the hope that it gives us there are also many on our uh, hearts and minds that uh, we've mentioned tonight and, and those that have gone unmentioned, and we ask that you be with them and just uh, place your uh, loving, tender mercy and care upon them. If it be your will, help us to return at the next appointed time. In Christ's name, amen.